This is a quick video giving some information about the 4.1 update to Curvy 3D. First off, we have a curve mirror tool where you can draw a curve and then flip it in X and Y to make more complicated shapes. Here I'm making a simple star with a line object. This is very useful for slab objects as well. Where you can draw more precise shapes and then uh, mirror them around. In Curvy 4 you can drag off menus if you want to reuse them frequently. So I've dragged off the mirror tool. Um, here I've got a, a loft with a hole cut in it. I'm going to use the trim along edges tool to add a line object around all of the open edges of, of the mesh. This is useful for adding a, a, a seam or a trim to, to clothes or armor pieces. But you've got to have an open object to use it, open edge. Now I'm going to show you some new lathe tools. Um, here I'm drawing a leg. I've drawn one curve and then I use the auto lathe tool to make it into the second curve. Now I'm going to use the auto lathe tool to make a third curve. This lets you have similar curves on each side without having to redraw them. So next I'm going to use it to make the fourth curve. That means I can reshape and make it less symmetrical, but still based on the same original curve. You don't have to do them one by one. You could go straight to four curves from one. One thing I like using this for is making belts and ties around an object. So I'll draw one side, one small piece of the belt expand that to two curves and then I've got the other side which I can drag into place and then to shape it further I can add the third and fourth curve Now, normally this would require cloning the curve moving it around rotating it carefully but with the the auto lathe tools you you get the extra curves very simply and can just tweak the the final steps tweak them into place so for the fourth curve, I'm going to make it very asymmetrical and scale that curve down. Curvy 4.1 has a re undo and redo option. You can use Control Z and Control Y, or you can use the buttons on the toolbar, the little back button and the forward button to redo edits. I'm going to now load in at some backdrops. These are image planes, they're actual models in your 3D view, um, but they're set up to work well as, as backdrops. So they're see-through, um, semi-opaque, you can, you can change that. They're just normal objects in the scene. So you can draw through them. Um, and when you rotate the view, they, they disappear out of the way. So when you're at an angled view, they won't get in your way. And if you freeze them as well, using the little freeze tool in the groups panel, you won't click on them accidentally. There's shortcuts to the views, um, control one, control two, control three, and control four, let you swap between front, side, perspective, and four views. There's an update to the move tool. Um, Whereas previously, if you wanted to align two things up, like a small thing onto a big thing, like a button, you'd have to move it in the side view. Whereas now you hold shift with the move tool and that'll move it in and out of the view, forwards and backwards, just holding shift as you drag. This also works for other things you can use the soft tool on, soft move tool. Uh, it'll work on curves, it'll work on meshes. So with the soft move tool, I can drag this curve up and through the object. 
from the front. We have a thicken tool, so now I've made a, a hollow bowl. And I'm going to use mesh thicken to fill it out into a solid 3D object. <clears throat> so we can change the width and the bevel That's for the other objects in Curvy. This works on more complicated shapes too. You have lots of holes and thicken will add a rim around the edge. Make them into thick objects. Again, this is useful for clothes, armour, also for making some tricky shape objects which are basically flat with a bit of thickness. You also have an extrude tool, so I'm just selecting a little part of this mesh to extrude. Uh, again, we get the controls popping up on the side. If we want it to be an indentation rather than extrusion, we can invert it. And you notice the mesh is yellow in the middle where the, the new selection will be. So if, uh, if we bake that and then extrude again, so we've extruded it in, in and now we're extruding out, it'll make a, a seam in the object. So sometimes that's nice for mechanicals to have a, a fairly tight seam between two parts. Next we're going to make another loft object. There's been an improvement to the, the thickness of lofts, which makes it follow the, the curved shape of the loft more accurately. So when we add some depth to the loft, it gives a nice smooth shape. Rather than just being extruded in a straight line. Next tool is the gradient um, mask in the masking tools. So you drag to create a mask and it lets you do things like shears, pinches, tapers, um, bends, all of these just from creating a, a gradient mask across the object. One I like is the twist. You can make screws and spirals. I'm just going to make a, a quick arm because you can also use the gradient mask to to mask out joints. Um, if you hold Control and Shift, you can add or subtract from that mask as well. So I'm just doing that to remove the edge. And if the mask is the wrong sort of width, you can use the the mask menu to change the the shape, the fall off of the the mask. Now I've got a very noisy object to show off the new smooth tools. First we have the, the rounded tool, which gives you almost a spherical object as a result of using it. Then we have the flattened tool, which evens out the surface using a sort of flat, flat shape. This is also quite useful on curved surfaces if you use it with a very low intensity. Um, it can smooth and even out and shape curved surfaces quite well too. It's quite hard to see because the effect is quite fine, um, but if you have a, sh a shiny object with lots of reflections, you can see the dents and dimples much more easily. Last is the, the curved brush, which tries to keep the curved shape underneath. 
uh, but removing the small defects in the surface. <clears throat> now all of these brushes work quite well even on quite high resolution meshes, so there was lots of very high resolution noise there, and we've ended up with very smooth objects. Next we have the fold pinch. So in three we had uh, a pinch brunch, um, which sort of squeezed the two edges together. So the top line there is the, the normal pinch brush. Um, then I'm going to turn on the, the fold pinch setting for the next line. This one gives you uh, like an angle. Um, it gives you sort of a flat, flat sided mountain effect <clears throat> with an angle along the crease, uh, which is to me more like a fold, whereas the other one is more like a squeeze. Last up, we have the curve redrawing tools. So we can un uh, redo a stroke or redraw it on top of itself. But each time we redraw with the redo stroke, it basically undoes and then redoes with whatever new settings we have. So I'm changing the intensity and the size of the stroke. You can press I and O to redo and repeat the stroke. You can set the taper values to fade in and fade out at the ends of the stroke. So they start small and faint and then or can fade out small and faint at the end. Um, yeah, and you can ch change the, the pinch, the intensity. You can even change the, the type of brush. So here's the noise brush used on the same stroke. Or the step brush. So that's all using redo. But if we repeat stroke instead, we can use several brushes in the same place on the same line. So for instance, we could draw an add stroke and then a pinch stroke to, to get a sort of double effect. And if you redo, the, if you repeat the same stroke over and over, it'll make a very sort of tall, big displacement like here. We can undo that, we can undo everything, and it still remembers the stroke, so we can make it repeat that stroke again. And that's it for Curvy 4.1 updates. Uh, you can check out the free 30-day demo at curvy3d.com.